What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Heading to my first service call of the day. Got a steam boiler? She ain't eating. Let's go see what's going on. Well, it looks like there's no power. Where is the switch? The switch is up there. Oh, you got something. I heard a click. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you still got the hose connected. <laughs> All right, we got this crown boiler. She's a big boy. Actually, let's say she's a big girl. Let's keep it real. 379,000 BTUs. We have a manual reset pressure troll, which is indicated by that red button right there. And an auto reset primary pressure troll. The purpose for this is if this primary pressure troll should ever fail and not turn off the boiler at a little under four PSI, which is a little bit too high, this will function. Uh, and turn off the boiler at 10 PSI, and the only way to restart it would be to hit that reset button, okay? The only way both these would fail is if both pigtails are clogged and or the brass nipple coming out of the boiler or that tap connection at the boiler gets clogged. Looks like we have way too much water in here, by the way. So we're gonna drain, and let's do the bucket challenge. This is called the low water cutoff. It has a probe right there. It sits in the water, and if there's never not water there, it will prevent the boiler from running. This is a rib relay utilized by the transformer and the uh, thermostat. This is your electronic ignition module. Here's your gas valve, electronic ignition gas valve. It gets 24 volts to open. There's our drain, our sight glass. And we may need to get the pump for this one. <laughs> oh my God. We may need to get the pump for this one. I'm willing to wager that we are out on pressure. What do you want to bet? Let's just say there's too much water in here. I'm not wasting any time. <laughs> there's just way too much water inside this boiler. So the question is, how long is it gonna be draining for? It's nine, 16 and 10 seconds. Let's see <laughs> how much water is inside this boiler. We're just moving the valves, opening and closing them a little bit in case there's anything stuck in there. Good 30 seconds so far. Five hundred and forty gallons. We are approaching a minute. We are at a minute mark. There we go. Let's bring this bad boy down to where she belongs. I'm going to keep her. Actually, I'm going to put her right around below the water level of the low water cutoff pro and let's test it to see if it was flooding out the system no one ever took that off i guess you can blame it on me we did that when it's like our low water cutoff is not doing nada i'm gonna keep draining this so we are at almost two minutes. We are at two minutes of pump time. And we just returned the water back to normal level. 
waiting for that light on the low water cutoff to illuminate. There it is. So there's that light on the low water cutoff. Let's churn off the, the pump and without getting any water all over the damn place, I wanna get this in there and I wanna pump out the water in this bucket so I don't gotta bring it up there. Pump out the water from the bucket. And we'll wait for the automatic feeder to fill the boiler back up and then we'll make sure that it's not flooding it out. Now the property owner did tell me that they were adding, that they were adding water. They were thinking that maybe there wasn't enough water in the boiler and that's why it wasn't firing, but. This is our bypass valve, it's closed. So here's our domestic hot water coming in. We have an isolation valve right there. We have a T, we have a strainer that we added. And come around across into our automatic feeder. I did check the manual before we install this. It can be installed in a vertical or horizontal orientation. And okay, let's see what happens. While we're uh, waiting for that to do something, we still got a low water condition. I wonder, I just wonder, were we out on high pressure? Were we out on this pressure troll? I guess we'll soon find out. All right, our feet are just activated. I'm gonna reset that timer. All right, so our water level uh, rose up a bit. She's above the height of our probe which is right there, so if you want to do a comparison. So we are above the height of the probe and our low water indicator light has went off. So the question now is, why isn't she running? All right, so the low water cutoff stopped filling right about there. Uh, we're gonna test and drain again. I wanna make sure that it does consistently turn off the water where it should and to make sure that I don't have a failure with my low water cutoff and or my automatic feeder. Again, I'm just doing some due diligence. I'm double and triple checking everything to make sure that the boiler um, operates as intended. All right, so there's my low water cutoff light. Let's turn off the pump. And we are lower than normal, right? Because I did let it run for a little bit. Actually, no, we're a hair under the probe. So we're going to... Uh, Wait a couple minutes, because in about two minutes, the automatic feeder will be getting a signal from the low water cutoff to fill. And if we take a look at our settings, <sighs> okay, had to loosen up the screw. <laughs> it had no problem coming off and putting it back on before, but had to loosen up the screw. If we look at our settings, our dip switch settings, uh, the one on the right, select one only, it's set for low water cutoff and the one on the left, which is set for two minutes. So make sure you only select one. So let's wait and see how this behaves. All right, so the automatic feed valve just got power and it is filling the boiler. We're gonna see how many gallons it takes. I'm gonna watch that slowly increase. See it moving slowly? Slowly inching up. Slowly inching up. Uh, let's see. Something's not right with this thermostat.
And you think we need a new one? <laughs> I think you may, yeah. Um, Do I have one? Yeah. Because it's like spazzing out. Mm -hmm. Now it's off completely. All right, so for testing purpose, I'm going to bypass the thermostat. Because when I first got here, I did bypass the thermostat. It did something. Mm -hmm. But then I found that the uh, the boiler was flooded. And I, re I forgot about removing buckets. I hooked up a pump to it. I removed two minutes worth of runtime. Okay. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. <laughs> That's probably a good eight to ten buckets of water. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so the water level is back where it should be. And <laughs> my boiler's running. Would you look at that? Bad thermostat. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna install a new thermostat. I got the White Rogers Series 80. This is the 1F83C 11PR. It's got a pipe doctor imprinted onto the front of the thermostat. <sighs> yeah, not so cool here. That window's open and these boxes are uh, pretty uh eerie feeling so we have two wires let me try to focus on the task at hand this is not going to be an episode of the twilight zone so there's the the rh and the w okay the way this works is that the red wire The red wire is carrying 24 volts from the boiler and the white wire is the W circuit. So when the thermostat is circuit is closed and there's a call for heat, the red wire connects to the white wire. That's simple. And then that closes TT and then we have heat. So let's take out these screws and let's mount the new base plate. Look at that one-handed. Excuse the mess. Yeah. But it is a quite an eerie feeling. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Trust me, you can get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I live here. If, if you're, you're used to it, it, I get used to it. It's all good. <laughs> I hear you. It's like an episode of the Twilight Zone here. <laughs> Every single time, I swear, the phone rings. I had something stuck in my throat right after I said Twilight Zone. It still feels like there's something stuck in there. Anyway, there's the thermostat base. My white wire is on W, and the red is on RH. So here is the thermostat, Emerson. Um, I get them... I found the cheapest place to buy them imprinted is at Jackson Systems. They imprint for free, and um, delivery is quick. I normally had Johnstone um, get my thermostats, and they would t uh, write Pipe Doctor below Set Time, Hold, and Run, those three buttons with the phone number. Uh, but I like it better over there. Um, looking pretty good. There's no room for a logo, but it's pretty cool. All right, let's set this to off we heard that click of the relay inside there so that's in the off position the fan don't matter because it's only a two wire system for water heating you know it's steam so let's take the base smack that up against there let's set the time real quick it is seven minutes to ten so it's nine 52 and it's tuesday exit okay so right now the thermostat is off we have a battery indicator right there a full strength let's set this to heat let's set this to 68 let's hold that hold this indicator right there there's the thermostat heating relay clicking on and let's go downstairs to the boil and make sure it is running we're gonna have to come up here two more times once actually Let's turn this off. Let's only make it up here one more time. So now the thermostat is off. Let's go downstairs, make sure the, the boiler is off. All 
All right, boiler's off. And it's not off because of a low water condition. Let's go back upstairs. There's the click. Perfect. All right. So we had a flooded boiler and bad thermostat.